In this video, we will be reviewing 7.5 to 7.7 .7 in your geometry textbook, beginning on page 466. We begin with the tangent ratio. So when we have a ratio, we have a fraction. And so the tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio of the leg opposite over the leg adjacent to the angle that we are talking about. So in this case, uh, the leg opposite, which means across from, of angle A is BC, and the leg adjacent is AC. Uh, most people, when they question which one's adjacent, we do have two adjacent sides. Here is an adjacent side, however, uh, it is not a leg, it is a hypotenuse. So do not confuse adjacent angle with uh, the hypotenuse. So uh, the tangent would equal BC over AC, depending on the values. So the first problem we're going to look at is just the tangent of angle J. We're just setting up the ratios and reducing them to nice fractions. So the leg opposite of angle J is KL. So if I do KL and the leg adjacent would be JL. So KL is equal to 24 and JL is equal to 32, which reduces to 3 fourths. If they ask you for it, uh, go ahead and divide and figure out what that is as a decimal, which is 0 0.5. They might also ask you for the tangent of angle K. So the side opposite of angle K is JL. JL. And the side adjacent is KL. So JL is 32 over 24 which reduces to 4 over 3, and that approximately is equal to 1.33 repeating. So if they say round, just give me 1.33. So that's the first type of problem, just the ratio of sides. The second type of problem is solving for a side length. So uh, in this particular problem, according to the angle that I am given, I have the side opposite, the leg opposite, over the leg adjacent. So that gives me leg opposite, so I'm underlining my options here, and the leg adjacent. So that means I have to use tangent. So the tangent of 32 degrees, of 32 degrees, is going to equal opposite 11 over adjacent x. So I go ahead and put tangent over 1 and cross multiply. So that gives me x times the tangent of 32, which equals 11. And then in order to solve for x, I divide each side by the tangent of 32. I would be wise and be careful when you're using your calculator. Make sure you're entering it in correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and round to the hundredths. So 11 divided by the tangent of 32. And then I close my parentheses and I press enter and I get about 17.6. Right, so that'd be rounding to the tenths. If I were to round to the hundredths, 17.60. Six zero. Okay, so that would make this leg 17.6, which makes sense. It looks a little bigger than 11. And a third type of problem would be actually solving for a angle measurement. So uh, we can solve for the measure of angle B. This will be our goal. So according to angle B, we are talking about angle B, we do have the leg opposite and the leg adjacent. So again, I'm going to be using the tangent of angle B is equal to 2 opposite over adjacent to radical 3. I can go ahead and reduce my right side to 1 over square root of 3, and that's equal to my tangent of angle B. In order to solve for B, I need to take the tangent inverse. I need to get rid of that tangent somehow. So I take the tangent inverse of both sides. Tangent of angle B, and that's the tangent inverse of 1 over radical 3. So these are inverse operations and undo each other. So we are left with the measure of angle B. And we can type this into our calculators and figure out approximately how big uh, angle B is in degrees. 
So if I type in second tangent of 1 divided by the square root of 3 and make sure that I close it out properly, I get 30, which means 30 degrees. So the measure of angle B is equal to 30 degrees. Sometimes you might have to round and the directions will tell you to do so. In section 7.6, we began using the sine and cosine ratios. So the sine, which we write as SIN of angle A, is equal to the leg opposite of angle A of A over the hypotenuse. So in this case, it is BC over AB. And then we have the cosine of angle A is equal to the leg adjacent of angle A over the hypotenuse, which in this case is AC over AB. So we should be able to set up those ratios in a similar fashion to the tangent and solve for sides and angles as well. In this example, we just want to solve for the sine of x and the sine of y. So I'm going to set up sine of angle x is equal to the side opposite, the leg opposite, which is 15, over the hypotenuse, which is 25. And of course, I want to reduce to 3 fifths. And they do say round to a couple decimal places. So that is 0 0.6. And the sine of angle y, remember, so Katoa is opposite of angle y, which is xz, or 20, over the hypotenuse, xy, which is 25. So that reduces to 4 fifths, or 0 0.8. In addition to setting up the ratio and figuring out what the sine of an angle is, we can solve for a side length. We are given 35 degrees and uh, two sides, x and 11. We want to find the side x. And so we are going to set up, depending on which sides we have, either sine or cosine. So, so, ka, toa. All right, according to the angle that I have, I have the side opposite. So that's these two. And then I also have the hypotenuse. So it looks like I'm going to be using a uh, sine. Since I have uh, both of those requirements, I'm going to go ahead and set up sine of 35 degrees is equal to the side opposite, 11 over my hypotenuse or sorry, x over my hypotenuse, which is 11. In order to solve, we can of course put the one side over one and cross multiply, and I get x equals 11 times the sine of 35 degrees. And when I type that into my calculator, 11 times the sine of 35 degrees, that is equal to approximately 6.31 approximately 6.31. So that means the side is 6.31. This makes sense since 35 is a, a smaller acute angle. Um, it makes sense that its side is going to be smaller than the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle. And <coughs> a third example would be if I have to use the sine in order to find an angle measurement. Okay, so according to the angle that I want to find, angle theta, I do have the side opposite and the hypotenuse. So that means that I want to use the sine of angle theta, which is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And then, of course, in order to find an angle, to get rid of the sine, to get theta, I need to take the sine inverse of both sides. So the sine inverse of sine of theta is equal to the sine inverse of the ratio of these two sides, 50 over 10, square root of 50 over 10. These are inverse operations. So we're left with angle theta is equal to the sine inverse 
of the square root of 50 over 10. Okay, keep in mind the square root of 50 is closed, and then we divide by 10. So I need to make sure I enter it in correctly. So I have the sine inverse of the square root of 50, and I don't want that divided by 10 underneath my square root, so I make sure that it is uh, fully closed out, divided by 10, which gives me 45. So that means theta is equal to 45 degrees. And we would do the exact same things for cosine. So moving on to 7.7, .7, uh, where we solve for the entire triangle. So I'm going to look at one particular problem uh, with several steps so that we can get the general idea of these three sections. Our first example we start out with two side lengths. So if we have two side lengths we should be able to automatically find the third side length using the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, 9 squared plus 12 squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared. So I have 81 plus 144 equals, I'm just going to put H for now, and uh, when I add these together I get 225, and H then once I take my square root equals 15. Okay, so now I can set up um, some sine, cosine, or tangent. That's what I'll be using in order to find one of the angles. So uh, let's just go off of angle A. Okay, angle A, I have all three sides so I can do whatever I want. I haven't done cosine yet, so I'll use cosine. I can choose. All right, cosine of angle A is equal to adjacent over, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12 over 15. And in order to solve for angle A, I need to take the cosine inverse of both sides. So the cosine of angle A, uh, cosine inverse, what you do to one side you must do to the other. I can reduce 12 over uh, 15 just to make it easier uh, on myself when I'm typing it in, and that's 4 fifths. Alright, um, then those are inverse operations, so angle A is equal to the cosine inverse of uh, 4 fifths, which is approximately, well, cosine inverse of 4 fifths. Type that in my calculator. So the cosine inverse of 4 fifths, which equals approximately 36.9. 36.9 degrees. So if angle A is 36.9 degrees, then I take away from 90 degrees, since angle A has to be supplementary, or sorry, complementary to angle C, I do 90 minus 36.9, and I should get 53.1. So that means angle C needs to be 53.1. So the whole goal of solving a right triangle is to find uh, the six pieces of information, three angles and three sides. My next example, I start out with one side and one angle. So I can jump straight to finding angle A by doing 90 minus 43.1. Or some people were doing 180 minus the 90 plus 43.6. Either will get you the correct answer. And I get 46.4. So I have this angle as well, 46.4 degrees. But I do have to use uh, side BC. So uh, if I want to find AC first, so let's find AC. Um, I want to use this angle, sure. So if I'm saying that's x and then this side's going to be y, I want to go ahead and do the tangent of angle B is equal to AC over BC. So the tangent of 43.6 degrees is equal to x over 5.2. I continue my uh, 
multiplication, cross multiplication here, and I get x equals, by putting that over 1, x equals 5.2 times the tangent of 43.6, and my directions will tell me around the two decimal places. So 5.2 times the tangent of 43.6, and I type that into my calculator, and I get about 4.95, two decimal places. About 4.95. So then, in order to find my hypotenuse, I can use the Pythagorean theorem now. 5.2 squared plus 4.95 squared equals y squared. And as I type that into my calculator, I get 48.6625 equals y squared. I take the square root. And I get y is approximately equal to 6.98. So I have officially solved for all my sides and all of my angles. And that's about it. If you guys have questions, please feel free to send me an email or see me before or after school.